Hello everybody, it's me, Chidini. A brain is a terrible thing to waste. As a matter of fact, an education is a terrible thing to waste. I stress this because in this new one world government that the global elite are trying to form, education plays a huge role. The global elite understands that there must be in place a one world currency in order to form a one world government or a world under one centralized power. With the dollar steadily losing its value daily, we see people or financial experts say that we should invest in gold and silver. While it is true that gold and silver is always greater than any currency and that they are both real money, it is also true that the World Bank, Federal Reserve, and many other financial global elites despise real money such as gold because they know that its worth is too great. Though they may have herds of it in their secret vaults, they know that there is little to no leadway in loaning out gold because it's very difficult to manipulate like they do the woven paper they use today. Congressman Ron Paul stated, and I quote, There's nothing to fear from globalism, free trade, and a single worldwide currency. The ultimate solution will only come with the rejection of fake money worldwide and a restoration of commodity money. Commodity money, if voluntarily and universally accepted, could give us single world currency, requiring no money managers, no manipulators orchestrating a man-made business cycle with rampant price inflation, unquote. And that's Ron Paul. That's on Congressional Record of March 13, 2001. With many people who consider themselves against the global elite scheme, they sure like to support it through Congressman Ron Paul. Uh, Ron Paul happens to be a pawn in their scheme to deceive and manipulate those true revolutionary spirited Amer Americans who want things to go the way things should be in order to prove that things will not be as wonderful as they thought. After a while, it will be the golden stamp of approval by the people to go ahead and let them pursue their goals of, of a one world government and a one world currency. The global elite will pursue this whether we want them to or not. We see that they want to increase the student loan debt interest by double. So now education comes into play with the global financial scheme. In the near future, Congress may stop the student loans from doubling by limiting federal subsidies of Stanford loans to uh, six years for under undergraduates. It will save the government $1.2 billion, and it will still screw countless or screw over countless students who are in search of a bachelor's degree. <clears throat> A uh, Youngstown State University counselor stated, In today's times, it is not unusual to see students spend six to seven years getting a four-year degree. We must keep that in mind. 18 years old, coming straight out of high school, going to college, it may take you six, seven, even eight years to get a four-year degree. Um, and that's coming from a counselor of a university, Youngstown State. Students are told a false income level bracket that they are duped into believing that once they get their bachelor's degree, they will be a part of this higher income bracket. Yet, we see those with actual hands-on experience get higher incomes than those with just a master's or doctrine degree. We will see more of this in the future. The key in this scheme is to have students stay in school longer so they can pay more back in student loan interest fees. <clears throat> The key in the scheme of putting a limit on federal subsidies of Stanford loans to six years for undergraduates is to embrace and encourage more students to go to college and take out loans if needed. And they hope that you do take out loans. <clears throat> Why do people think that the president and many other financial and governmental elitists want to see everyone go to school to get a better job or education? Someone is benefiting off of this, and it is not the students. The American dollar in the economy may be weak, but it is still a smart place to invest in. Well, at least they secretly make it appear that way. America has always created their enemy and even funded their enemies' regimes. In every American enemy, there is a global elitist who supports and looks out for the best interests of the United Nations, i.e., the British and the American forces.
In the May 10th, 2012, Wall Street Journal edition, there was an article labeled Chinese banks gets the nod in U.S., where giant banks owned by the Chinese government are coming to the U.S. Uh, the Federal Reserve approved plans by three state-backed Chinese banks to expand in the U.S., including the first acquisition of a U.S. retail banking network by a state-owned Chinese lender. <clears throat> Loan balances fell by more than $56 billion, according to the latest FDIC, that's the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, uh, in May 2012. Lending to larger commercial and industrial customers rose, but other types of lending, such as to small businesses and individuals, declined. Yet the loans for college education continually uh, are continually on the rise. Though most college loans are lent from a government-funded program, with loans for college education continually rising, it should not come to any surprise why Chinese banks want to exploit the American lending business. Most students will have to pay back the interest on their college loans, whether they pay or not. The government will make sure it is uh, it gets its money, basically. The government will always make sure it gets its money. Rather, it's through forced garnishments or repo of expensive of possessions. This will only make Americans take out more loans to compensate for what they have lost. The banks rely on government and the government rely on banks. It is safe to say that the Chinese has long waited to spread its monetary dominance on U.S. and Europe soil. Because of the high superiority complex of China, this could be a big door opening that could eventually wage differences and horrible disagreements among other high patriotic superiority complex countries such as America and the British. How weak the American currency is has not been a concern for the Chinese. They are only concerned with furthering their own financial capitalistic agenda. How weak the American currency is has not been a concern for the global elite. They are only concerned with getting the world superpowers to comp compromise and negotiate an agreement to accept a one world currency in which they will all share as one. <clears throat> the journalists of the Wall Street Journal went on to agree that the Chinese banks long have sought access to the United States banking system in order to provide financing to Chinese companies operating overseas and to do business with foreign investors looking for exposure to the Chinese currency. That's from the Wall Street Journal, May 10th, 2012. In the June 1st, 2012 edition of the Wall Street Journal, there was an article labeled as uh, basically Asia strains under Euro crisis. That was the name of the label, uh, the article. It was labeled Asia strains under Euro crisis. And basically it states that the economies of Asia are being hit by a slowing domestic growth and the impact of the European debt crisis on Asian exports and finance. A pullback by European banks keeping their resources at home is crimping credit throughout Asia, including finance, which is very vital for trade. Here we see how much power and pull the European uh, banking cartel really has. Yet, we see the steady and ready willingness of this strained continent needing to work with the European banking and credit system. Michedini.com Support the cause. Support the cause.